Merry Christmas abiding presence. Thank you for joining worship this evening. We are glad to be celebrating Christmas Eve together in a new way. Make sure to have your take-home Christmas kits ready during the children's sermon and also your candles ready as we sing Silent Night. And now let us worship the newborn king. Merry Christmas. I bring you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born a Savior, Christ the Lord. Blessed be the Holy One of Israel, the Word made flesh, the power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Watch the light of your Christ grow, waiting with ancient ones in the land of deep darkness. We wonder with Mary, who beheld your glory, worshiping the holy child born unto us, a son given, who is life and light for all people. This is the light that shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. You fill us with new light, light of the word, who became flesh and live among us. Let the light of our faith shine in all we do. Amen. Amen.
A reading from Isaiah, chapter 9, beginning at verse 2. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Word of God, word of life. Hey everybody, Those, some people picked up a uh, take-home kit at the church this past week for the children's message and for worship, and there's all kinds of goodies in there, but I want to focus on one thing that you have in your bag. There is a little white bag, a bag of sand, and a little tea light candle because we're going to make a luminaria for the children's message today. 
Because luminarias are really, really neat things. So open your bag up and you can take some sand out and you can pour some of that sand in there. And if you're having a hard time, maybe ask a grown-up around you to help you out so that way the sand doesn't fall everywhere. But we're going to pour some sand in there to make our luminaria just enough to keep it down on the ground and to make sure that the candle has something to sit on top of. And then we place the candle right in the middle and then ask a grown-up to help you to light the luminaria. So we're going to light this candle, and it's going to start to glow. And the cool thing about a luminaria is they used to take these and place them outside of houses, and they would let people know that they're welcoming Christ to come into their homes. Well, tonight, I want you to take your luminaria after you make it and place it outside your front door because I want you to take the light of Christ out into the world because that's what resides inside each and every one of us, the light of Christ. We're going to talk about that tonight, and I want to invite you to be the light of Christ in the world. So I can't wait to drive around and see your luminarias, and we'll see you soon. Merry Christmas. This is the Holy Gospel according to Luke, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration that was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was a descendant from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find the child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. And when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. And so they went with haste, and they found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. And when they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary, Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Merry Christmas. When I was 16 years old, I had my first job, but I had to work on Christmas Eve. I was this sacker, this you know, grocery bagger at the local Kroger in Alvin, Texas, and, and I was the newest employee, so I got the late shift, and I had to stay there all the way till closing, and then I walked out to my car, and it was so dark out, and I drove home, and my mom waited up for me, and, and she was still in her pajamas. She was waiting for her baby to get home. And I I asked her, how how was church? She said, oh, it was so lovely. But you know, there's another service in like 15 minutes. Mom, can can, can we go? And so mom and I climbed into the car and drove to Alvin Lutheran Church. I'm pretty sure she was still wearing her pajamas. And and we sat in the same pew as always. And, And it was the time for Silent Night to be sung. And the 
Candles were starting to light up the sanctuary. The lights were going down. And I stood there staring at the flame of my little white candle. And I, and I couldn't sing. I was just crying. And, and my mom put her arm around me. She knew that I was missing my grandmother. She had passed away recently. And mom whispered in my ear, I, I miss her too. But you know, she's with us right now. And I turned to look up at my mom, and, and, and she was crying as well. This baby boy found amazing comfort in, in a mother's love and in this little light that was shining in the darkness. And every year, as we sing Silent Night and the church begins to glow with candlelight, I stare at my single flame, and I'm swept right back to 1989, fourth pew on the right-hand side of the front of Alvin Lutheran, crying in my mother's arms, and I can, I can feel her with me in those moments. I can feel the presence of my grandmother with me, and, and I experience something holy and divine all from this little light that's shining in the darkness. Even though we're not able to be together in person this Christmas Eve, this light still shines, and it shines through you. Let us pray. Gracious God, you chose to come to us to enter this world as a baby. And you know the depth of our darkness, and you promised light to break forth from it. Watch over us as we gather together, separated by distance and household, to welcome your son, Emmanuel. May the light of your Christ shine through us for all the world to experience. Amen. So I'm sorry, folks, there's no room for you in the pews. You're just going to have to welcome the Christ child right where you are. This was not the message we were hoping to share with you this evening. I was so expecting people to be around the tree taking their annual family picture, shoulder to shoulder, packed pews of people gathering in the darkness as light illumines faces singing, all is calm, all is bright, holding back my own tears. Everything just, it just feels so different. It just seems so much more difficult this year, which is really interesting and fitting that we're reading about Mary and Joseph tonight on Christmas Eve because they dealt with amazing, difficult circumstances. I mean, this holy family was traveling while pregnant. They got to a place where there was no room for them. In the end, they, they had to make do with a feeding trough, and they dumped it out to make a crib for a newborn. And they were alone. They were more, much more than six feet away from anybody else. And in all of these difficult circumstances, God chose to come into the world. And Mary wrapped that newborn in whatever straps of cloth that she could find. And she named him Jesus. And she stared into the eyes of her baby. And she experienced something holy and divine. She was staring at the light of the world. She would remember the words of the, part of the prophets. Uh, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who live in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined, for a child has been born to us, a son given, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And in those difficult circumstances and in the darkness of that cave, Mary and Joseph were illuminated by love's pure light. And at that same time, there were shepherds in the field watching their flocks. And these lowly field workers, they pulled the late shift. It was nighttime. It was so dark. And an angel appears. And the glory of the Lord shines all around them. And they listen to these angelic messages. And they rush to go see the Savior. And they experience something holy and divine. And then they return glorifying God for all they had seen and heard. On that, on that first Christmas morning... Christ came to an unlikely couple dealing with amazing difficulties. The first people that visited were these unlikely people in darkness watching sheep. Christ came to the world as this vulnerable baby boy in the darkness of a cave. These people 
that were walking in darkness saw a great light. Now, it's been a while since that first Christmas morning, but we get to experience the same thing this year. Because no matter what difficult circumstances we face, no matter how many people we are gathered with right now in this very moment, no matter what darkness we find ourselves walking in, we have seen a great light unto us a son is given. This is the light that shines in the darkness. And this light is shining beyond this sanctuary right now. It is illuminating your home. It is touching your loved ones. It is shining out your front door for the whole world to see. We are experiencing right now something divine and holy, even in the middle of all of our difficult circumstances. There is a light that is shining in the darkness, and it beams bright right from you. We're called to share the light of Christ that's burning inside each and every one of us with the entire world. We might be separated right now, but we're not alone. We may be socially distanced from loved ones and family members, but, but we're not alone. We may be huddled in homes and rooms and facilities around TVs and tablets, but we're not alone. God is with us. Emmanuel, the light that shines in the darkness, is with us at this very moment. So, Merry Christmas, abiding presence. I hope and pray that you experience something holy and divine on this Christmas Eve and share the light of Christ with the world. Amen.
Let us boldly confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Joining our voices with the song of the angels, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. The shepherds sing, Jesus Christ is born. Mighty and merciful God, we praise you for bringing your word to birth among us. Let your church throughout the world proclaim the good news over hills and everywhere. Unite the voices of all your faithful people in songs of praise and rejoicing. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We praise you for your created earth, the stars in the sky, the animals in the stables, the flocks in the field. Heaven and nature sing joy to the world. Show us your majesty in the brightness of day and the darkness of night. Rouse our care for your magnificent creation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. The angels sing peace on earth. Come quickly to still the strife of this world. Hush the noise of war and violence in places of unrest. Inspire leaders of nations to seek lasting and sustainable provision for all in their care. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We praise you for new parents with their newborns, for the joys of families of every shape and size. Visit the homes where there is sickness or sorrow. Abide with people who live isolated from others. Heal the sick, feed the hungry, shelter the homeless and the refugee. Visit those in prison, comfort mourners. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We praise you for the development of coronavirus vaccines. We pray for the millions who are afflicted with COVID-19. Uphold physicians, nurses, and all healthcare workers, and provide medical facilities for everyone. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. The heavenly chorus sings, glory to God in the highest. We praise you for all the saints who have proclaimed your glory in word and deed, especially those we remember in our hearts. With them, let us sing your praise, now and forever. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of mercy, come quickly to us with grace upon grace as we lift these and all our prayers to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please, wherever you are this Christmas Eve, we hope that you'll reach out and share God's peace with your loved ones, your friends, and family. Peace be with you, Sally. Peace be with you. Peace be with you all. God comes to us where we are. 
and calls us to shine the light of Christ to the world in everything that we say and do. Abiding presence provides opportunities to worship, learn, and fellowship even during these challenging times, sharing the light of Christ with all. Your gifts enable this place of grace to seek God and serve others with the love of God made known in the babe born in Bethlehem. Thank you for any special end of the year gifts you may be considering and for your continued generosity. Merry Christmas. Let us pray together. Generous God, you have given us life, this community, and these gifts of the earth that became the meal of your grace. Move in our hearts that we might use your gifts to bring hope and blessing wherever we go. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy child, in the light of this night, teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The Word becomes flesh and lives among us, and we behold Christ's glory. To us a child is born, to us a son is given. His name is Jesus. Jesus is the light of the world. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it.
Now may Almighty God, who sent the Holy Spirit to Mary, proclaimed joy through the angels, sent the shepherds with good news, and led the Magi by a star, bless you this day through the Word made flesh. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Be the light of Christ.